Again, my name is Russell Scott from scottcarvings.com and today we're going to carve a gnome. Um, his head's kind of turned a bit here. He's got a turned head. Holding three daisies. I just did this kind of quick sort of the conceptual understanding. I think I, I mean there's still more, a lot more to do, but I want to Start from scratch. Use this as kind of a go, go by. This is with uh, actually this is uh, my wife Lynn's semi idea of uh, come up with her own gnome holding a daisy, and that's what they, this is going to do. Is this is going to be a gnome holding like three daisies? Uh, it's kind of a artistic concept of let's say a whole a lot of daisies but I thought for the sake of this video uh, we'll just do three you can add more uh, the other um, artistic licenses being a gnome I think the daisy would probably be about this big and cover his face um, another way you can do it is you can have his arms closed and just have wire and a, a daisy or something I might do something like that but just for the sake of uh, of uh, um, a little bit artistic. I made them wider, longer, have three daisies. Uh, well, we'll start right in. I am um, videoing indoors. Now, um, it's kind of getting a little punky out there, but uh, I think more and more I'll be carving indoors is because uh, it's getting warmer and warmer out. In fact, even by the end of this week, it's supposed to really get up there. So I'm going to do start with the center line and sort of his, his center line and then come down and then do, because he's tilted, is the deal. Kind of instead of it going straight up and down, he's just kind of a happy... Happy gnome, and we want to figure out where the um, shoulders are, right about here. And of course, you will see the the pattern that will guide you. The pattern is usually um, me giving you the finished product. But in here, this is not right. I kind of want the the shoulder has got to twist a little bit. Not too much. So this has got to... Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it a little higher. This one higher. I think this one needs to go higher. You can always bring it down later. So, because he's kind of twisted a little bit, I would put the center line in for the back. The back is going to be simple. I mean, it's just going to have the arms back here. <clears throat> here we bring the arms. I'm just going to, I want to be above, I want to say the, the I'm going to call it the skirt or the coat. See the, the, the coat there, but it's going to be just above. And you can see how far off with my pattern that you could now have. That maybe done quite a bit of adjustments. Bring this back a little bit. Make sure the shoulders line up. Again, you can put more, more pencil. You can always erase or uh, cut out more wood. Now the arms are going to be kind of sort of to arms. The hands are going to be kind of together right here. We'll get it close to, if not right at the bottom of the skirt. 
don't know why I call it skirt. You know, the top coat. Now it's going to kind of come up. And that's a good start. And of course, we will begin with the V tool. Oh, before I do that, before I put the pencil down, I always like to get the foot penciled in. So, usually when I start doing the rough outs, I really start, you know, banging away on the wood, and I'll just want to keep. I don't want to put the chisel down and or the knife down and have to repencil if I can pencil something right now. Okay. Here we go with the chisel glove on for me. Hopefully for you too. Start by I'm going to kind of <clears throat> leave this open for now <clears throat> because usually when I cut this in I find out that I've been a little too scampy on that so we'll just kind of keep that open for now that's sort of one of my more recent thoughts and discoveries goes down so far this feels like a nice piece of wood as a matter of fact these two pieces are from the same block of wood cuz how did yeah, I do it this did it this way and this way so I try to utilize as much wood as I could but this, for some reason, near the foot area is was really well, yeah, really stiff, where it gets kind of a darker brown and stiff. I don't know, like it's getting close to a branch or something. But so far, this is a cleaner, as I can see at this point. Now, <clears throat> I'll put these in, but one thing I did neglect to put in, and of course that would be the three daisies. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Oh, jeez. He's trying to get away. He's happy with what he is right now. <clears throat> okay, let me get this in first. Separate those. Oops. Separate knives and chisels that so they won't clatter while I put the pressure down. I'll leave that open for now, but <clears throat> let's get the daisies in. Let's start off with the big one in the center. But a little high. This is going to be the one that's going to be up on top. The others are going to be kind of in. Oh. I will adjust them. Let me just at least get the first sketchings in. <coughs> Because I want this to come. The outer part of the circle is here. Erase, erase. This one is going to be a nice circle. See, that's the thing that I like about sketching is the reason why they do this little first is then you could figure out which lines you want to make permanent because you have a reference to one scratching as opposed to another. Let's get rid of this. 
start on the outside. And round it because it's going to disappear behind the front daisy. And of course, you can have them do any other flower you want. So it's kind of almost like a two-thirds of the Olympic symbol right there. Okay, it keeps and then it fall over. Now one of the things is uh, now my wife Lynn, she comes up with a lot of ideas, but a lot of her ideas I don't want to say directly from somebody else's. In other words, she does do a lot of going on the internet and seeing everybody else's other people's wood carving is maybe just get her version of it and not copy. And I'm kind of like that too. You know, we got some Santa figurines and, you know, I like the way the arm goes on this figurine. and I like the way the other arm goes on that figurine and, and they kind of come up with a new concept. And I won't make it as big or round or whatever or tall or but the problem I, I try not to do that I try not to get on the internet and look at other people's stuff because I mean I go on the uh, Facebook um, um, get that in there you know the clubs we got there you know I got the character carvers and the affiliates and all that kind of stuff and see some of the stuff but the reason why I just don't want to be too um, like, uh, like I, I don't want to copy. I mean, I've got, and everybody's got, a lot of people's got, you know, when you get to, some, you see somebody's got a, a good, uh, in your club, a good um, carving, and oh yeah, you take and put it down there, and you take a picture like that, and you take a picture like that, and all of this, and, and you take pictures, so you're trying to make your own pattern. I've got like throughout the years put it together at the at the very least a thousand, if not thousands, <laughs> of those pictures, and I can count on one hand, well let's say one hand, two hands with fingers to spare as to how many that I copied. <clears throat> so, anyways, because of that, I kind of got something in my throat here. Uh, let you catch up. <clears throat> also still a little bit of the season of but almost getting out of that for some reason my my throat would dry okay let's oh i want to keep this on i want to start chiseling away <clears throat> but the worst part about she does a lot of on the internet and looking at other wood carvers is that See, first we're going to start rounding this out a bit. Is that I would come up on an idea out of my head, not seeing anybody's or anything. And then she would look at, oh, that's that looks like Joe. You sure you're not copying from Joe Schmo's pattern? Who? And then, uh, well, I think Jeannie Schmiedelmeyer's got one, something similar to that. What the heck are you talking about? Well, and look it up. Well, yeah, it's not like what mine is, but I'm going to come up with another idea. Well, you know, and as I'm trying to come up with ideas that are all brand new, but it is so hard because almost everything has been done, so to speak. And so if, <clears throat> I mean, if I did have, you know, somebody's version of such and such, I would give a shout out and say this is, but I try to come up with my own. That is something that I have 
done for years now. I just got tired of other people's pattern and I got their pattern book and so I got the pattern and so I thought, well, I just want to do my own. But once in a while, you know, when the Woodcarver's Illustrated magazine comes in or Chip Chap magazine comes in and somebody's got that, you know, I want to do one of those. I might want to do one of those, but I certainly would not put it in a video form. Especially around Christmas time. Uh, that's that's the most that somebody's got something. Now this is the skirt here. The skirt, I keep calling it the skirt, the part of the coat that's up. So I do not, when, I, when I'm taking this out of here, I do not want to take that off. I want to lift the arm. Yes, I do. But I don't want to take the coat off or the bottom of the coat off. Same with here. And like I said, it's like when you're doing the cutouts of the arm, it's like you had a hot knife through butter. You just go straight down, straight across. I mean, we'll do rounding later, but this is just to bring the arm out during the first rough out, rough outing. And I do want that shoulder to come up. What's going to happen is we're going to be taking that shoulder down, but we want the shoulder above, not too much above, because it's the beard. And the beard will be coming down. Now I'm going to leave these flowers square for right now. At the same time, start developing a, a 90 degree angle. That's where the, the head is going to be about here. I'll square it a little bit. So it'll be that much less to futz with. Same thing here. At the same time. Now I want to be careful with sharpening this because when you got that on your belly, while you, especially while you're pulling a lot of wood, that kind of, that does not feel too good. Let's get some light, get the light a little better here, hopefully. So I'm going to square a little bit of that. And I also want to square a little bit of this. Because since... Because what's going to happen is I, I want the... D, what I want, I started to do with this. When we start getting into the daisy, notice the daisies are facing out. And I want this one to be facing up a little bit. So it's kind of a little bit of natural instead of just straight looking out at you. While I'm here, I'm going to do a little bit of this. And I think you might need a bigger tool to do this. Or smaller tool, I'm sorry. But at least get this started to let me know we got to dig that out. Okay. Over here, you can do this arm. Remember, I want to keep that shirt, shirt bottom, the skirt of the shirt. Oh, we still want this to be squared. Well, another thing is that, uh, another reason why you probably don't need to go out as much anymore that and we are now at that period where states are beginning to open up our state will be the stay-at-home order will be lifted Monday which is a few days from now 
but still, you know, social distancing, wearing, your, wearing the mask, wash your hands. If you're sick, stay at home, that kind of a thing. <clears throat> And I, I do predict we will have a surge, but I'm hoping that the surge is not great enough to have another stay-at-home order. So, right. we'll be rounding that. As we go, oh, I'm going to take this off, down, but be careful, at least some, but the skirt will kind of disappear as the arm comes down. Oops, I think I took, I took too much off, because I want to square it. All right, now I do want to, like I said, I hate corners, but I want to come up to this flower. Now the flower will bend, like I said, the flowers will, will go out, but not as much. So I'm gonna still leave it square, but by taking this arm, the form arm back, now, do remember the elbow is what sticks out the farthest. And so this is starts to go in. The forearm does. And you can see we're starting to, just starting to look a little bit like somebody holding something. Same thing with the, like I said, the shoulder is going to come in, the upper arm is going to come in, but I want to leave the flower alone, oops, leave the flower alone for now. That's when we start to get into our more medium detailing. my bearings there for a minute. I thought I just took off a chunk of the flower. Same here. Now when we bring the shoulders in, again, leave the flower alone. And what's going to happen? Is we're going to do this little cut here, valley cut, and it'll get there. There. Now, I always mention when you're doing this part of the arm is put that crease in, but we're not rounding right now. We're just giving it the first round here. And with that, let's start in on the shoes and the the pants. He's got these kind of baggy trousers kind of a thing. So we'll start with the shoe. Just giving the shoe a start. In there. there you go. 
there. Get now his feet shaped a little bit. In other words, taking heavy wood off so that when it comes time to do shaping, we don't have to push as much wood off. Just getting her started. You took a little too much off there, but here's just a little, a little bit just for the rounding. Now we come over here. There's where most of the feet. Around just a little bit on the outside. A lot more on the inside. Okay, at the same time. A little bit of shaping and taking some of the saw marks off. Now what I want to do is thin the shoe a little bit. You could, something about, I like ha having more wood for the shoe instead of cutting it out is because if you have the, I don't know, sometimes you might take more out. Like me, is I have to watch my, the angle when I cut, you know, I can, the blade is straight down. Sometimes the table kind of turns on me, and then if I do that, I'll have too much. One foot, one foot is a huge, and the other one is a pancake. But either which way, if you feel comfortable of just carving out the foot the way it's, or cut out, cut out the foot the way it's supposed to, go ahead. Okay, now the foot is, I want to say, generally shaped. I'm sure there's more. Of course there's more. But we took most of the lumber off. Now what we could do, start rounding the pants a bit. That and then here on the inside, just a, just a like a rounding, starting the rounding process here. You don't have to go all the way through, but just enough to round it. Keep rounding. Like I said, this is the these are fast paced videos because I want to get it all in and I just don't want to stop and give you a lecture and blah blah blah. Let's keep moving on. I can if I did that I could tell that you will take your mouse and slide. Let's see how you cut that. I don't care about the philosophy of why and and 27 years ago, my mother once told me, I don't care. I mean, it makes for a good story and all that, but I want to teach. And the thing is, is that um, you learn to dive in safely and keep diving in. In other words, carving very rapidly because... Like I have mentioned several times, is that I'd be in the middle of a car and I'd get kind of bored of it. You know, let's let's move on. Especially some of these, they've got uh, pieces. That's what kind of after a while it's okay. I got the Santa done. Oops, I still got to do the tree for it. Uh, Oops, I gotta do an owl for the stick. Uh, but I'm done. It's not done until it's done. As so I keep going back and forth. Okay. You know, I think 
we're good at the first stage of tearing a lot of tearing cutting a lot of whacking a lot of um, wood off I mean I probably could have I, I leave I leave this area open instead of <clears throat> what's going to happen is that the hat is going to kind of come down at an angle like this and the hair is going to go out and the reason why I leave that is because uh, when it comes to shaping the head I want to make sure I got some of that extra there extra wood or extra play because um, it may not turn out the way the saw. I mean, how many times have you, especially when it comes around cutting at the arm, come in, oh, the arm is here, and, and all of a sudden, you, as you're carving, you realize, uh oh, I wish I'd have gained more for the arm or more for whatever. And that's why I like to leave the arms almost like a block of wood. And that's the difference between, you know, developing. <coughs> And cutting a from a rough out, start rounding a little bit, especially the back, taking a little bit of that off as I'm beginning to see, not too much, just so we can still move it a bit. At the same time, kind of taking saw marks off as well. Bring it around, make sure we got a good 90 degree angle for the face. I'm gonna leave the beard a little bit there. Beard can kind of be more fuller. Maybe cut off a little more than I should have. But we're still working with it. I'll take the pencil to that, I'll stop doing that stuff I sometimes I go by eye instead of sometimes I pencil the pencil is still an important tool but when I do a rough a cutout or video or, or I mean if I'm on my own yeah I know what that is and I'll just start cutting it out before I have a chance to pencil it again at the same time taking just taking marks off And kind of cleaning and maybe a little more deeper at the same time. So another clean number one. Okay. So let's take just pencil in this the hair is going to go back a little bit right I want to round off the feet, the feet and the legs a little bit let's start with the legs I always like to start at the bottom when it come to more cleaning and first round shaping in other words, taking all the saw marks off at the same time. Kind of cleaning it a bit. Because after you're done with round one of this medium cleanup and shaping, you really get to see. I mean, it's like getting close to done. Now the gnome is kind of the tradition of the people up here in Minnesota, Iowa, a little bit of Iowa, a lot of Scandinavian art. As I mentioned before, like Northern Iowa and Decorah, you got the Vesterheim and it is 
a museum of Scandinavian wood art. It's all mostly wood. To the best of my knowledge, I think it is all wood. With their traditions and Right now that I've cleaned and kind of round, let's get my let's pull that out. I'm gonna keep one full on that. Now I want to round this. Round and round she goes. We'll get to the shoe later. And of course, when we come back for the last time, we'll put the wrinkles in and and so on. I guess I just want to do the first round of rounding, cleaning, getting the saw marks off. Speaking of rounding, let's get back to this. I'd like to zoom in, but I'm, I'm afraid if I zoom in that it starts to slip and slip and slip. And as you, some of my people have been, my wood carving friends who've been with me for so long on my videos, I do a lot of slippage. But, well, let's put that here so that I what rolled on me. A little bit of cleaning. Because, oh, sorry. We're still, we're still rounding, rounding. So on. Well, I'll fix that when I get to the leg or the foot around the leg. So you're rounding. Okay, the rounding and a little more shaping. I want the leg to go back. So in order to do that is just a little bit of, take off a little more on this side, a little more off the top, just a little bit. 